I have too much space in my kitchen, said no one ever. There's always like this lack of space. There's always this unutilized portion of our kitchen. In my opinion, I think that the problem isn't always our kitchen. It's how we use the space that's in our kitchen. Are we using it as effectively as possible? Are there areas in our kitchen that we could, you know, massage a little bit to make more functional? And sometimes what happens, at least what happens to me, is uh, I'm using my kitchen and, you know, it just, I'm just going through the motions of life. Using my kitchen, I am not really too concerned about, you know, trying to fix anything. Like that takes time or it takes effort or whatever. And so we just kind of put up with it. Now I'm I'm more of a person that can just, just I'll just put up with it for as long as I can handle it. But there comes a point when you want to maximize that space and that's what we want to talk about tonight. So I found this really interesting article and uh, we're gonna look at it. It's 60 items, it's from House Beautiful. 60 clever small kitchen ideas to maximize uh, your space. Now only 10 of these actually I think are helpful, which I think is funny. When I see a list of 60 or 50 or whatever, I'm like, really? There's 60 ways you can maximize the space in your kitchen? And as I started looking, I realized there, there, some of these really aren't ways to maximize space. They're great ideas, just not maximizing space ideas, which is the whole point of that article. So let's jump into it real quick. And before I do, let me look at the question of the day, which is this, how do you maximize kitchen space to make it more functional? That's the theme of this live stream. That's the theme if you're watching. What do you do in your kitchen? What did you do in your kitchen to make it more functional, to maximize space? Because there's a finite amount of space. You have to use it to the best that you can. And, you know, maybe you just got to stop buying dishes. I see some, some uh, comments coming in. We'll, we'll come back to these in a few minutes. I'm going to jump over and... Uh, in a minute so let's let's bring up the article first let's do that where's the article do i have it here it's here somewhere here it is. okay no oh, no that's not the article that's one of the there we go no that's not it either <laughs> i'll get this i'll get this right eventually okay so this is 60 clever small kitchen ideas to maximize space i'll just rifle through a few of these because i want to jump into the actual ones uh that i think might be very useful <clears throat> And excuse me, I got a little like thing going on. Um, here, here, here's number one, hang from the ceiling. That's a great idea, but who's gonna hang anything from the ceiling? Uh, I guess you're gonna have to get a ladder with this one. So hang things from the ceiling. Here, let me get down here, all right. The next one was use your green thumb. Now I want you to remember, <coughs> I'm so sorry, if I'm gonna cough. I want you to remember, this is 60 clever small kitchen ideas to maximize space. So, so these might be great ideas, but they're to maximize space. So you can uh, plant, you can put a plant in there. Uh, um, that's not going to maximize space. Okay, let's go to the next one. You can add task lighting. Anyone see that movie? My kids watch that movie. It's pretty interesting. Um, Okay, you can add task lighting. Again, that's not gonna maximize the space of your kitchen. It's a great idea, but what are they thinking about in this uh, in this article? I don't wanna, I'm not dissing them. It's a, it's a neat article, it just doesn't line up with the title so much. So let's go to the next one. Oh, here's a few more. All right, get some statement lighting. Okay, well, that's the same as adding some lighting, it's not maximizing space, add a skirt. That's just removing doors and, and putting on cloth. Uh, Again, not maximizing space. So I was going through this article being like, does anything maximize space? Make a breakfast bar. Okay, maybe, but it didn't make my list because if you're trying to maximize space, adding something in, I don't think uh, is gonna work. Warm it up with a rug. Throw a rug in there. That'll maximize the space of your kitchen. <laughs> no problem. Channel a ship. This was a really great one to maximize space. Channel a ship small the smaller the cozier embrace it with cream colors and gold fixtures in this small cubic kitchen the retro ship inspired hardware and design details complement the size of the space looks really interesting but um it's not going to help you maximize the space so you see what i'm up against here with this article i really want to find some things now as we get on a little bit further 
we will find that there are a few things and let's let's just jump right over to that right away and we'll um we'll get rid of this so there's there's 10 items on this list that i thought were helpful let's look at them and uh and then we'll go back and i'll show you some of the other ones that didn't make the cut as well but here's uh here is number 13. And maybe you can let me know. Do these? Maybe I missed the boat here too. I'm not sure. I didn't channel the ship properly. Uh, possibly. Uh, how many of these are going to help us maximize the space? That that's the mission. Okay. We want to maximize the space. Repurpose furniture for storage. Okay. When you turn out, uh, when you, when you run out of cabinet space, just repurpose a dresser or an armoire to house all of your plates. Uh, honey, what are you doing with your socks and stuff? I just, I need this for plates. Uh, anyway, this is a, the, the cottage, the royal treatment with antique uh, gilded pieces and uh, Edwardian plaster cabinet. Okay, so whatever. Um, yeah, okay, I guess if you have an extra, you know, uh, dresser hanging around, like we all do, we all have some extra dressers, maybe you do, or an armoire or anything like that, you can repurpose that if you have room for it. But, but if you have a smaller kitchen, my guess is you probably don't have room for it. So, so that would be, uh, I don't know. Not the not not the greatest start, I realize, but it could be something that you could you could add something on the wall, maybe a wall that's not used, something shallow, some some open shelves, open shelves or something like that might might come in handy. Anyway, repurpose furniture for storage. I, maybe you don't even have to put it in your kitchen. It could be you run out of cabinet space and you just throw your dishes, you know, in the, the, the dresser uh, in the spare room. I don't know. All right, let's go. Let's go to the next one. So far, not so good. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Obviously, have beautiful subscribers do not have small kitchen issues. No, but some of us do. Let's go to the next one. This was this was number 18. Uh, Built-in wine storage. Again, not not the greatest because if you have room in a cabinet for a wine, you know, storage, then you know you're you're not maximizing the space. However, I will say this: by putting it in the side of the cabinet, like they did in this one, you're probably able to fit more wine bottles or whatever you want to put in there. Sneak in extra storage. Uh, sneak in extra storage every chance you get. Uh, here, they nestled in an entire wine storage cabinet within the millwork of this kitchen no extra floor space required true true there's no extra floor space required but you still need that cabinet like you're still using that cabinet for that so uh you know it's it's iffy if it's uh if it should be on my list or not so far i'm batting a thousand here i know and I, all right number two number two number three this was a 19 on the list a movable kitchen bar you can see how difficult this list was to try to find things that would actually help us to maximize space in the kitchen. So movable kitchen bar to gain counter space, add a movable bar to the doorway of your kitchen. When you need to get in and out, it can easily roll out of the way. Interesting. This is an interesting idea. Get a movable island cart or a movable counter space that you can just roll out of the way. Now, obviously there has to be some other place in your house that you can store this thing. And because you're going to block yourself into your kitchen if you have a doorway. So this was, I thought this was interesting and unique and possibly could be a way to maximize some counter space, maybe a little extra storage that's movable that you can move into somewhere else. So this one was interesting. This is probably the closest one so far that actually could um, help us in our small kitchens. But if you have everything else small in your house as well, you still need a place to put this thing. So might not be the best thing not might not be the best thing all right so far so good we'll go back to this in a second but this is a funny list it's 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 a really funny list um anytime i, I mean you're probably not you don't probably don't care about about these blogs i just read them because i basically it's i get a lot of ideas from these things and I, there's so many blogs Like just type up some of these ideas, like, um, you know, kitchen ideas or, ki you know, kitchen design ideas. And you'll be surprised, like, like, what's a good number for a list? Like five, 10 is a good number. Um, but, but anything after that, like how, how many of these, these things are implementable? And when I seen 60, I'm like, I got to check this list out. Who has 60 things on a list? So 
And I agree with you, it's not the best article so far. And that's what makes it so great is because you really got to dig uh, in this one. So, and D. Zeller, we put wine storage in a closet near the front door so it didn't take up any space in the kitchen. That's the other thing. Some things you can put somewhere else and that really helps maximize space in the kitchen. But that's not on this list. It probably should be. So, and uh, T. MB is saying drawer banks are a surefire way to maximize space. And I couldn't agree more. You know I love drawer banks. I think they're the best. All right. <clears throat> Hold on now. All right, what's this now? LOL, my husband got a chuckle at that. Okay, I actually just told him I have to empty two full cabinets and I need more things. Do you though? Do we need more things? We always, I mean, I like getting new things. There's nothing, I mean, I end up donating them though eventually. I mounted floating shelves on the walls uh, of a box bay window on one side. Plant wall for growing herbs, small plants on the other side. And yes, added an island care for extra counter space and storage. Cool. There you go. That's what you need to do. You have to think through the space that you do have and add what you can. And uh, that's good. I like, I like. All right, let's keep going. So that was number 10 or number 19. Number four. Okay, so this is uh, number 20. Put things on top of appliances. I kind of got to chuckle at this one. I mean, I guess so, but really? If you've got space between your cabinets and your ceiling, you've got storage. You sure do. Add a wicker basket or ceiling high shelves and cubbies. It's the perfect spot to keep lesser used tools or cookbooks in this kitchen designed by this person. One cabinet is also covered in chalk paint for notes and reminders. Okay, well that's, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. However, um, ooh, two dear. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. You know, um, yeah, you can put things on top of things, your cabinets, or you can put things on top of your appliances. I guess. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna agree with this one. This is a way to maximize space because you got to think about the fact that I mean, here's what do you got from the top of your fridge? Um, if you don't have a cabinet there. Most people have a cabinet there, or maybe there's a gap there. You can slide something in there. It's not the best, but you could put something in there. You know, you can put a book in there. You can turn my camera back on. Um, you can you can do all kinds of things. So so that that's pretty good. It's a good way just to to help out because you have to get creative. That's this the whole thing. Uh, and don't forget the two tier drawer system. Make sure you're not putting in items that are gonna like pop up on the bottom one. So when you pull the top one out, it gets jammed up in there. That's the only problem with some of those. They are great, but just be careful what you're putting in them. All right, let's go to the next one. Very good, very good. Squeeze in more cabinets. I don't know why I put this one on the list. If you don't have any space in your kitchen, then how are you supposed to squeeze in more cabinets? However, to squeeze in extra storage, try adding little cubbies to fill in the space above the window or your range hood, all right? Just make sure that you have a step ladder handy. We're also digging the statement hood on this uh, kitchen. Proof that size doesn't matter. Well, yes, that's a still a huge uh, hood. Okay, so are there walls? You know, can you put a cabinet above your window? Can, do you have room for that ladder? The idea is, is there is there unutilized portions of your kitchen that you could actually put a cabinet or or something, you know, like, like you know, we, we mentioned here adding shelves if you need to. Um, are there places that you can actually put something to make it a little more functional? And that's, that's the whole key. That is the whole key to this. All right, let's keep going. All right, so squeeze in more cabinets. All right, next one. <laughs> get scrappy. You just need to get scrappy with your kitchen, okay? That's just what you have to do. Take advantage of literally every, every little surface, even ones that don't seem functional. For example, uh, these kitchen people added a rod with hooks under the sh upper shelves to hang mugs and cooking uten utensils. Strategic and chic. Very chic. 
very strategic. And yeah, this I'm going to say this is something you can actually definitely do. And if you're into hanging things, um, that's a good option. Ikea has a lot of these things. They're, they, they're everywhere, really. But I did notice at Ikea, they're really, really into these rods. I actually bought one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get it. Hang tight. I'll show you. I didn't go far. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna install this. I'm gonna install this in my kitchen. But they have these like uh, these rod things. You know, I didn't even open this yet. I just couldn't help myself. I seen these here. I'm like, I'm gonna buy these. These rods with these little baskets, and um, yeah, they have this this thing here. That uh, this thing here gets installed underneath your wall cabinet, and it has these like trays that that hook on. And this tray here has a spot for like stand up little plates and stuff so that they can drip dry. It's all plastic and, uh, you know, so yeah, you can get these little things. Stay tuned. I'm going to have this in a video eventually, but I just got to make another trip back Ooh, to Ikea. Ugh. And get more of them. So, you know. You can uh, you can get those things, and these are the ugliest ones at IKEA. They actually have some really kind of nice ones that I didn't want to buy. Uh, these are kind of like the you know not the nicest ones, but they look fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna try installing it as long as I don't it doesn't have to be permanent. I'm gonna try to do it so it's not permanent because I have a feeling I'm gonna not like it because I just don't like things hanging there. But if you do, this is a great way to do it. If you need to maximize space in your kitchen getting things you can hang on, definitely uh, a way to go. And I seen um, somebody's comment earlier, and I, I think Ivy was yours. Um, pegboards, pegboards, uh, Ikea has great pegboards um, that you can you can put, cause they're, they're really shallow and you can hang stuff on there. And they have it in their showrooms. Though at my last trip, I didn't see them there, they removed them. So maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, yeah, so that's definitely a way to do it. Oh, I, let me get rid of your, your comment here. There we go. All right. Okay, hey, hi from Winnipeg. Hi, Valerie. Yeah, Winnipeg, that's where you guys are getting some snow or, or something, I hear. A lot of bad bad weather, I hope, hopefully not. It's April, you know, it's time to get, get rid of the snow. Let's get into spring. Yeah, this is very true. I like stuff tucked away. Um, I don't like it. Don't like it hanging. Unless it's re unless it really fits. Unless it's really nice. My my issue is it probably just you know would just be a mess all the time. All right, let's get back into our article here. Let's go. All right, so get scrappy. That's probably the best title of all these. How many more are left? Oh, we got four more. Let's keep going. Uh, hang pots and pans. Okay, you know I'm not a fan of that. Obviously, I don't like hanging things, but. This is a great way to maximize storage space, maximize the space of a small kitchen. So this was a good one. Uh, bulky pa pans uh, can take up valuable space. So install industrial pot rack above the kitchen island or on an empty wall. It's functional and stylish. And in this kitchen, uh, the copper pots and pans boast a vintage French country style character. Yes, I'll take your word for it, but that is definitely something you can do, uh, hang pots. You either love it or you don't love it. But if you need the space, maybe try it. I don't know. Uh, pot hangers are, I think, becoming more trendy now. You know, I think they're, they're getting more trendy. Um, you see it more and more. Of course, my, my, my friend's mom and dad, they have a, a hanging pot rack over their island that they've had forever. And so the thing just went out of style, like it's just coming back in style. So I just... You know, if, if you're into hanging pot racks, it's definitely a way to do it. I guess if you have a nice pots, like if you have dingy old pots, maybe not, but maybe so. Like it doesn't even matter. Like who cares? No one's going to come in and judge your pots. Uh, I hope not anyway. Kick them out if they do and um, or just don't cook them anything. But if you need to hang them, that's a good way to do it. I don't know if you caught my video with um, uh, my reaction video with, with the pot rack that goes inside the cabinet. That was really, really cool. Really only takes up about 15 inches, maybe 18 maximum. And it just pulls, pulls in and out. Great way to do it. Great way to do it. Hanging pots and pans. So that can be, that can be done. All right. This was number 51 on the list.
make your island multi-purpose. Yes. If your kitchen is small, you likely won't have room for an island. No. So how am I making it multi-purpose if I don't have room for one? Uh, so, <clears throat> okay, well, you can't, you don't, you don't have room for an island and a breakfast nook. Choose an island that'll double duty. You can use it as a counter space when you're prepping dinner and then eat at it later. This is definitely doable. So if you don't have room for both, just make sure your island is multifunctional. Here's the issue with that. If you're, if you're having a work surface space, then you have room under that work surface space for cabinets, which is storage, which you're trying to get more of. So by taking that away to create space for your legs, I don't know if that's really going to work. However, uh, it's definitely something you can do, but uh, it's not the best one either. This list, I don't know. All right, we got a couple more, two more to go. Um, an appliance garage. I like how their titles like r really vary. Like, uh, channel a ship, get scrappy, and appliance scratch. All right. To keep countertops clear, tuck the toaster and coffee maker away in a sleek appliance garage. A stand mixer can pop up from its own designated cabinet if you install a spring-loaded shelf. It sure can. And if you... I guess this would be good if you're designing a kitchen, if you are um, going to do a renovation in a smaller space to, to plan this out a little bit, plan out that you want to have that, that stuff tucked away or plan out that you want to use a cabinet for an appliance lift. If you do have a big mixer. So these are definitely things you can do to, to kind of help yourself out. You can add an appliance garage. Um, and really it's just a way to, to tuck that stuff, you know, somewhere out of sight. I don't know how much it maximizes storage. I'm going to write these. I'm going to write this, this, I'm going to write these people. I'm going to write them, talk to them about their, their articles. That's a great website. I'm not dissing them. I just, I just think it's funny. Singular kitchen shelf, no counter space, no problem. A single shelf adds a spot to put the not so necessary, but actually totally necessary kitchen items like candles, art, and vases. No, they're definitely not necessary. However, adding a single shelf, adding some shelving in a particular spot that's workable uh, is definitely, definitely something you can do. And I know that not everybody likes open shelves, uh, you know, just because of the, the dust issue. And we talk about that lots of times. And I have many comments on the channel, many comments coming on certain videos where I talk about open shelves. And, you know, a lot of people um, like them. And a lot of people just don't like them at all. There's, there's no happy medium there. However, in a small space, if you need to add something like that, you can. And it, um, you know, just a spot to, to hang, to, to put those those vases and, and uh, paintings that are some necessary in your space. But, um, you know, so this this article, let's bring up the, the original article again. Ooh, where do we go? There we go. All right, this article, you know, and, and I think, uh, yeah. This is an interior design perspective for sure. Exactly why uh, they're saying things like, actually, this should have made the list, maybe. Uh, pare down, do you really need 25 extra bowls? Pare down your kitchen stuff to the bare minimum, and you'll be surprised how much space you actually have. That way, your textural materials can really pop. Yeah, so this, I, I should have put this one on the list. This is not. This is just in the article. This is probably the best one. Just get rid of some of your stuff. Uh, you don't need everything, you know, in there. Probably, I mean, unless you use it all the time. But there's a lot of stuff that you can get rid of. And if you just commit to going cabinet by cabinet, oh, you know, maybe it'll take you a little time. You can get rid of some of that stuff. And that's really the best way to maximize space in your kitchen is create more space by getting rid of all the crud that you don't need. Unless you do need it, then, then keep it and that's fine. But if you don't need it, get rid of it. I should have read that article better. Keep it classic. All right, here we go. Keep it classic. This is one great way to maximize space. Um, add some subway tile. Because that's that, that's going to help. I love this article. Let's, let's look at a few more. Add a runner. All right, that's we did that one. Go high gloss. So yeah, this was definitely an interior designer's perspective. 
you know, and, and these are great. This would just be, this would just should be titled differently. And, and that's really what, 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 what we should do. Title it a little differently so that we're not looking for ways to space, but you are, you all have kitchens and that what, that's what brings us really to the, the question of the week is how do we go about maximizing the space in our kitchen to make it more functional? So let's, let's think about it for a minute, we'll jump into the, the, the comments uh, in the chat here and, and we'll talk about it for a second. Um, because this article missed the, you know, the mark quite a bit. So let's rewrite it. Let's come up with some ways. What are some actual good ways uh, to to maximize our kitchen spaces? Doesn't they don't have to be small kitchens? They can just be any kitchen. But what can we do? And yeah, Valerie's saying decluttering solves so many problems. I'm paring down as I get ready for a reno to start on the 25th. Congratulations. That's exciting. And um, that'll be that'll be awesome and this is the best way to do it get get rid of some of your stuff so that that stuff doesn't have to come into the new kitchen and um bonus you'll be you'd be happy that you did and it feels good to get rid of some stuff and declutter too it kind of i don't know just it's good for the head sometimes uh i made a table with open shelves under it and use it as a prep station and keep my bowls under cool so just wait you know different ways that you can help maximize. We maximize, but really understanding how we use our space. What is important to us, that's huge. Also declutter. Decluttering is a big deal, but um, this this is a really good point because what, especially if you are de redesigning a kitchen or getting ready to, to do a renovation, Valerie, um, how do you, how are you going to use that space and really think about it and really plan it out where things are going to go um what things do you have to get rid of what things can stay what things can leave and understanding how how you use that space is so important is a really good point so like this this should be number one on our list is understand how you use your kitchen okay so before you even declutter think about how you use your space and then proceed from there the next thing i would say is definitely declutter uh, so that would be number two all right, what do we have here? For reach in pantries, add extra shelves in the extra space for storage of small appliances. Use less deep face-to-face -face side mounted shelves in areas that may be encumbered uh, by a wall above an opening. Right. Um, yeah, and I'm a big fan of pullouts everywhere that you can get, especially in a pantry. There shouldn't be a reach in pantry. There, there should be pull out pantries that you can get at and it's a great way to maximize space um just you know and sometimes you just need to get creative and just think through what you can do to add you don't have to spend a ton of money even sometimes you can you, you know you can uh you, you can get stuff you know for for less money that's that's usable and just make sure it's not cruddy cruddy quality all right, we can use drawer organizers for spice pots and dishes. Yeah, organizers, organizers, inserts, accessories. That's where you're, you should be spending your money and, uh, and and figuring out the best way to organize. And something I'm going to bring up in a future video, and I've probably talked about it before, but you you, you spend a lot of money on your, uh, you know, your kitchen and um, you you don't think about what's going inside of it. You just, a lot of people just, you know, what's on the outside because what they're looking at. I've seen this a lot, you know, over the years. And, um, and so they kind of max out their budget on all the exterior stuff and don't think about the interior stuff. So really good. Remove soffit mm, and extend cabinets, kick plate drawers. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. <clears throat> you guys are on point. So Ashlyn, I totally agree. Get rid of that soffit, extend your cabinets. That's extra storage. At the very least, you have, you know, I don't, and you didn't hear this from me because I would, I, I wouldn't do this myself, but you have that space on top of your cabinets. If you can't maybe afford or don't want to do something like that right away, you, you can store stuff up top there, but I, I didn't tell you to do that. And kick blade drawers. Th those are great. Definitely. Jeff's got a good point. Decide what you really need. And this comes down to the decluttering. Like, really? Do you need all that stuff? Um, I got rid of some stuff today. Felt great. Just stuff that we don't use. It just messes up the cabinets. I'm gonna. You'll see it in a future video Saturday. Um, I used my kitchen for five years and designed it as I went along. 
Awesome. There's because as you go along, you realize some of the things that uh, aren't working or are working and, and that's a good way to do it. So cool, cool, cool. We broke our bread machine, figured out our stand mixer does a great job of kneading all kinds of dough. Didn't replace the bread maker. There you go. Do you have it on a stand in a, in a cabinet or is it sitting somewhere? Those things are heavy. And you know, it's a lot to take up. Um, if you use a stand mixer a lot, it's it might be worth putting in a, an appliance lift. Does anyone out there, do any of you have an appliance lift with a stand mixer? Because I always wondered, are like how great, how good are they? Because I never had one. I don't I don't have a stand mixer. And, uh, and we don't have a stand mixer in the house. Is it worth devoting a whole cabinet to? Um, I, I mean, I, I do it for clients. I just wonder, <laughs> I wonder how, how good they are. Relocate seldom used items to another room. Right, that dresser we talked about earlier, or the armoire, just go throw stuff in there, get get rid of it, put it in another room, relocate. Yep, I agree. I'm getting ready for complete, complete kitchen reno. We're reconfiguring the footprint. Nice, that's exciting. That is exciting. Um, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you the best advice I can on that. Get as many design options as possible from whoever you're you're doing it with. If you do it yourself, or if you're having a designer do it, get as many design options as as possible, um, because it helps you see things that you might not have seen before. Helps you realize what you what you do really like and what you don't really like. Uh, it's trust me, it's a really good idea. Plan a place for everything. Yeah, this is, and that's what we're talking about. Comes down to planning out, thinking about it. Where is this thing going to go? Um, you would be surprised how many clients I've had over the years who just never thought about it because they're they're kind of like um, just in love with the new kitchen and they're getting you know this brand new design and it looks beautiful and new countertops and. And then they don't think about what's where they're going to put everything. And then what happens is you get in there and you're, it's it's not working the best for you. And you, you won't admit it because you spent so much money on it, but really it's not working. I considered, okay, so I considered an appliance lift for my stand mixer, but I wanted to share that space with other small appliances. Yeah, because they take up a ton of room. So, hey, Jackie's here. Hi, Jackie. Um, yeah, donate them. They're on a basement shelf. I mean, how many appliances do we do we accumulate over the years that we don't use? Uh, you know, time to get rid of them. I actually brought out my my Soda Stream. I, this is this is sign language for Soda Stream. Apparently, I brought out my Soda Stream uh, from a closet and I put it on my counter because I started using it a little more. So that's out there now. The mixer will sit on counter. So heavy. Uh, thought of appliance lift, but they are expensive. Yeah, will be the only item on the counter. Even the toaster and kettle will have a home. <clears throat> and that's what has to work. Uh, but that was the thing, because those th they just take up so much room. And um, if you're trying to maximize space, maybe that cabinet can be used, you know, better if you had more things in there. So that's really uh, that's really good. So. So this this article wasn't um, wasn't a hit for me. Let's bring it back up for a minute. We'll we'll cycle through a few more. That's not the article, is it? Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, here we go. Um, paint the ceiling. All right. No, don't paint the ceiling. It's not going to maximize your space. <laughs> anyway, I think we all understand that this article was not written really by a kitchen designer. Um, it wasn't written by anybody who knows anything about kitchens anyways. Not that they didn't do a good job. It's just that blogs are usually written by by hired people and they just find some stuff and they put it together. And they, they sometimes will put a name on it um, that they have permission to put a name on because I was asked to do that. And I said, no, I don't wanna, I don't want to because I might not agree with the article. And anyway, you can mirror the walls. Uh, that's the built-in wine storage, removable bar. What else we got? Put things on top of cabinets. Okay. Oh yeah, ditch the hardware. Well, this 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 is a, a popular thing that's happening, but it's not going to help you maximize the space. However, um, you know, go for it. Swap out an island. Yeah, I was thinking about this one. Swap out an island. New Yorkers. Uh, 
know how awkward those one wall kitchens can be. Okay. And they're, they're tiny yet somehow managed to take up an entire wall of your living room. This chic, simple design proves that there are ways to redeem them. The console function is a kitchen island and a dining spot. Well, if you have room for this thing, you have room for an island. So get rid of that thing and put an island in there and really maximize your space. Okay, so that's my advice for that. Uh, go bright. That will help you see the space better if you go bright. So not gonna help you maximize it, but, but cool. Incorporate special details. Um, no. <laughs> Create flow with color, not maximizing space. Install a mini wine fridge. No, I have a small kitchen. I don't have room for anything, let alone a mini wine fridge. Open the windows. This is the best. I should have added this one. Open the windows. Yeah, that that red panda is saying it all right now. Uh, open the windows. Sure, the kitchen might be small, but the windows sure aren't. If you're in a small, a similar predicament, open the windows to get the air flowing and keep things breezy to make it feel less claustrophobic. The bright accents in the kitchen are in a great addition. It's a beautiful kitchen, but opening the windows, that's a great way to maximize your space. You just throw stuff out on your lawn, you know, so that, that works. And these are all great ideas, just have nothing to do with maximizing space. That's why it's funny. So squeeze, oh yeah, we had that one. Go graphic in, the ga in a galley kitchen. Okay. Oh, I don't think so. Have fun with wallpaper. Yes. Have fun getting tired of it and ripping it off later. Okay. Expose your goods. Okay. Let's look at this one. Maybe this would be something. Expose your goods. <laughs> anyway, keep things white. Well, keeping things white will brighten up a small space. Okay. But that doesn't mean you have to swear off wood forever. Reclaim wood shelving. Reclaimed wood shelving adds contrast. And, uh, oh my gosh, the exposing your goods. Um, <laughs> I can't even read. The prettiest items are on display and on the exposed wall. Yeah, okay. If you have extra wall space, do it. Put it. Put in a wall, open shelf, dust it every single day, and uh, you're good. I, I know, no open shelving. A, sl a slide in bar cart. <clears throat> And this isn't a picture of a bar cart, so I don't even know what they're talking about. Um, but but actually, that is a good idea. If you have, um, if, or if you have been to IKEA, I, I, you know, or wherever, they have a lot of great uh, of those island carts, and they're they're small, and they can be used, you know, to uh, to do that. So that that might be a good one. Let's jump back over here because uh, I don't know. This is funny. Uh, thumbs up the video, you know, if you can, because thumbs up are free and helps uh, support, helps helps me. So do that if you can, give it a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Um, and if you're watching this somehow and you're not subscribed, click the button and, and do it. Um, I appreciate that as well. However, um, all right. I, okay, I wanna make sure Sorry, I'm gonna go back to that one. Hold on, let's go up a little here. Because I seen a question. All right. Uh, okay. Mixer. Oh, soda stream. Yeah, on your count up. Cool. Jackie, they're so good. And you can get the bubbly mix for it, which I love. Uh, it's, it's Yeah, mine sits by my coffee maker too, right? That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> okay, back to this one. I considered the appliance lift, but didn't want to, you know, the whole cabinet's too much. Um, yeah, if you have a nice looking stand mixer, why not put it out there? Uh, I would suggest grouping together all items that would be used in each zone, then try different combos of what store together uh, in which drawer. That way, um, you know how big your drawers need to be. Very good tip is just, here's your, here's your stuff. How's it gonna be grouped together? What's the best way to do it? I agree. This must have been an April Fool's Day post. It might have been. I should check. I don't. I don't know when they posted it, but I don't think so. I think they're pretty serious about this one. Um, you know, they just titled it wrong. That's really. That's really the problem. 
the, yeah, they've lost storage and probably books on the stool. <laughs> Pretty colors, yeah. Oh my goodness. Karen, congratulations, finally got the live stream to show on my feed. I have no idea why that wouldn't work. If you have bell notifications on, YouTube's supposed to do that, but glad that you made it, glad that you're here. Oh yeah, open the windows, because that's how you maximize space in your kitchen. So cool. Yeah, and I, I see these open shelf comments, no way. All right, what's this one? Uh, if anything, mount a narrower cabinet it, with removed backs in front of windows. Really? Remove the back, do it in front of a window. Does it have a door on it? All right, you're, you're pushing the envelope, I like it. Um, you know, because if you have a small space, you're like, that this, I've actually seen a picture of that too, to be honest with you. Um, I did see a picture of something like that. <laughs> and I seen a picture of, of uh, a microwave range hood, an OTR installed you uh, know in, in front of a window it wasn't over the range it was just in front of a window uh yeah Ooh, what's this Rem all right you have a lot of good ideas um you should call house beautiful and write them an article and like submit them an article and say here this is this is what we're gonna do remove the measuring cups and spoons from drawers and cabinets and mount them using 3m command hooks on the back of cabinet doors crafty these are crafty ways and that's that's what you have to think about i'm guessing maybe you have a small kitchen i don't know uh, you might not but a small or a kitchen there's all kinds of things you can do and that's really the the good point so yeah i agree okay let's jump back to the article real quick because i want to go through some more of these get a good laugh create your own pantry <clears throat> if you have zero space in your kitchen create your own pantry because that doesn't need any room at all yeah, create a storage nook on a nearby wall. Okay, they're blocking a door with that storage nook, by the way, that's interesting. Ensure the breakfast counter flows. Connect the kitchen and dining area with a cut pass, a cute pass through, and not only does it open up both rooms, you can put a counter up on it. Yeah, that is definitely a way to do it. I'm getting a phone call. I can't take it right now. Uh, okay, next one. Oh yeah, let's get scrappy. Keep the stools low. Okay, I don't know. Paint an accent wall. That's a great way to uh, maximize your storage. Paint that wall. Make it blend in. Choose a moody color scheme. Conceal everything. Hide your kitchen. That's a great way to do it. Make a statement. Make it a jewel box. They're just going for it here. Just every single one. Opt for backless stools. All right, we got the hanging pots and pans. So, you know, okay, I had enough. There goes my camera. I gotta get that fixed, but I don't know how. All right, let's go back to the chat. Hey, Kristen's saying, gonna be tearing out my kitchen soon. I swear I may only, I'm the only one who's not putting in an island. That's okay. My big kitchen is not, my kitchen is not big and I love family dinners. Just got a huge dining table. Hope that's not a mistake. Well, I like islands. So if you can't have both, then go for the big dining table because that will enable you to do what you want to do, which is have big family dinners. So that's not a mistake at all. If you have room for both, then go for both. But if you don't want to put an island in, don't put an island in. Um, but my, my, my best advice is, which I already said in a few minutes ago, is, is at least get it designed with an island so you can see all the options. Make sure you design it as much, many different ways as possible. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Um, and let me just, I, I gotta, uh, I was texting someone, <laughs> just called me. All right, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I'd say it's not a mistake, but it would be a mistake if you didn't see all the options. So, okay, that's what I would do. And take out the piano. No way, gotta have a piano in your kitchen. <laughs> all right, I actually used these very, th yeah, 
yeah that's because then that's that's how you know that they work because you actually use them and that's really cool hey jeff hey mark uh can you give us pros and cons of going with a certified kitchen designer as opposed to just a kitchen designer <laughs> um all right yes yes i can okay just because a designer is certified doesn't mean that they have the experience to to design really great kitchens it comes with time it means they took a bunch of courses probably through the NK, N, nkbh uh the, the nkba the national kitchen bath association and they and they got certified if you go with a designer who's not certified, but they have 25 years experience, they've been around the block and they, they, they know what they're doing. And I said, I would, it, I think that this is a really hard question. Thank you for totally stumping me on my live stream, but it's a really good question because, um, to get certified, you, you go through, you take all these courses and Hey, I'll give you a little secret. Don't let this get out. I'm not, I'm not certified by the NKBH, NKBA. I, I was going to be, and then I realized the amount of money that you need to spend to get a piece of paper to, to tell you that you can do something that you already know how to do and that I've been doing for years, it wasn't worth it. So I'll say it that way. So what I'm trying to say is I know designers who are certified and they're great. I know lots of designers who are not certified and they're great. And I know the opposite as well. So the pros are make sure you go to a designer who's going to give you as many options as possible, who's going to work with you and not be like, no, this is how you have to do it. And there's no other way. Um, I hope that answers your question. That's a tough one. But good question. Shoot. Wish I had a better answer for you. I'll have to think about that one a little more. What is considered a small kitchen? Um, well, according to some guidelines, there's a certain amount of square footage. I think it's 150 square feet. Does that sound right? I don't know. It might, you know, unless. So, but again, a small kitchen, it can be a little bit subjective. So, oh yeah, I got you. All right. All right. Take out the piano. Can always all right, can I always use a table or extra part space? Yeah, you can. Tables are lower, so it's it. They can be a little bit difficult to use as as prep space um, unless you're sitting at them, just because of the height. Unless you have a, a high bar table, but but it can definitely double if you needed to. All right. I you know I had we we had a big island that doubled as a dining room table. In other words, we we didn't have a table. We had an island that had, I had a, a seating area in the front and the back, and it had cabinetry so that we could use it as multi-purpose. And we did that in our last two homes. We didn't do it in this one because it just the space didn't wasn't conducive for it. But that's uh, something you can do. Command hooks are great for maximizing vertical space. Yes, they are. And they're gonna be what I'm going to use to hang up my new sign uh, when I get to it. I think command hooks are going to be the, the way to go. Love it. <clears throat> love it, love it, love it. All right. All right, let's see. From For me, experience wins and sitting down with the designer to see if uh, if, if they, they mesh. Yeah, um, it's, it's good. You know, it's, um, I have an online design service. I'm not, not pushing it on this live stream but I get clients from all over the place and it's amazing what you can get done over the internet. Sometimes I'll do, uh, you know, consultations over zoom so we can chat personally and, and, and talk about it. But it is, it, it is important that you, you, you have, uh, some type, you know, a, a relationship with the designer. In other words, you, 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 you know, you, you, you like them or they're, they're, they're giving you the service that you're looking for. That is really important. And experience is definitely important in my opinion. That's not to say that someone who only has a few years experience can't design you a great kitchen. Definitely not true that, that, but experience usually does help because I'm going to tell you something. 
after 20 years, I've made so many mistakes and I've messed up so many people's kitchens along the way. And I've wasted so much money that there's just some things that, that come with experience that don't come any other way. Oh my. Uh, no, okay, yeah. My, my family's older, switch to an island. There you go, Just switch it out later. All right, hi Mark. What brand appliances are you going to put in your kitchen and why? Uh, if I was an appliance geek, um, maybe I'd care more about the brand name, but I'm not. So I have Samsung and I think I have an LG hood, but, and my fridge is Samsung. It's, you know, the one with the screen on it that we can watch YouTube and check the weather and all that stuff. So, but you know, I'm, I, it is a lot. I mean, I want them to last. I want them to be good quality. I'm not in a position that I can break the bank on, you know, really high end appliances, but that's a great question. Um, but I'm just not, I, I'm not into appliance brands. Uh, does it look nice? Does it doesn't work. Does it have a, a screen in it? I'll take it. <laughs> so I use Samsung and LG. I've, I've had others before. Um, some are great, some are, but the LG is holding up or the, and the Samsung's holding up great. So, Hey, thanks for being on Kelly. Appreciate it. 150. Yeah. 80 square feet. Yeah. That's small. So I think I'm, I'm, I think 150 is like the limit of what they say a small kitchen is and under that. So yeah, 80, 80 is a, a small kitchen for sure. Uh, table and wheels that chairs can go under the shelves. That's a way to do it. Okay. What's this now? The kitchen I want to design would be 144 square space in an open plan. L shape, maybe? Is it an L shape for an open floor plan? Key is, is just to, to get the most out of it <laughs> that, that you can. Uh, my Ikea designer definitely did not live in Georgia where I live. He lives somewhere in Canada. Well, I live in Canada. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Anyway, no, that Jeff, that was a, that's a really great question, um, that I don't have a great answer for. So, um, I appreciate the question because it is, it is a good one because some people, um, you can think that because you're certified that it, it means something that it doesn't mean. It, it does mean that you're educated. Um, so, and that's always good. Education is always good. Experience is always good. If you have both of those, that's really good. And over time. Like I read all the books. I just didn't take the, any of the tests because you know, you're doing it every single day. I don't have, I don't have time to do that. Um, and it, it didn't matter. It, what, they, they weren't gonna pay me more, so no, no thanks. 10 by 15 is 150 square feet. Yeah, 10 by 15. Um, so maybe a little less than 150 would be small. That's still kind of small, 10 by 15. I, I, it depends on who you are, obviously. With regards to appliances, hey Matthew, with regards to uh, appliances, the Korean stuff is generally good, but if you need service, your experience may be difficult. Yeah, unless you're really crafty. Yes, yes we do. Um, unless you're really crafty, I had to like order a part for a washing machine once and I, I, I felt so like handy because I tore it all apart and installed it and all that stuff. It was really cool. But yeah, if you need service, that's that's the thing. What's the warranty? What's the service going to be like? Is there someone around that can repair the thing if it needs to be repaired? So, um, so many brands of appliances out there. And I get kind of suspicious when I start seeing appliances pop up in all these places that really the appliances don't have a business being in. Um, but I guess appliances are appliances. So back to this one. This is my, this is the comment of the night. You get a special prize for this one. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. 90 square feet. Uh, gallery, 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 galley uh, kitchen. Yeah, that's uh, that small one wall, two wall, straight run kitchen. Ikea appliances are Whirlpool. Yes, they are Whirlpool. Um, I don't have experience with Ikea's appliances specifically, but I've had Whirlpool in, in the past and it was okay. It was okay. 
Is there enough difference between a single sink in a 30 inch cabinet or a 33 inch cabinet for a smaller sink to be an issue? Is there enough of a difference between a single sink in a 30 or a 33 for the smaller sink to be an issue? Um, well, if you get a 33 inch cabinet, go with that, then you can get, you can get a little bigger sink. You can probably fit in like a double sized, either double or single large single bowl. Um, you just have to be careful with the size of the sink in the cabinet that you have room, not only with the cutout, but underneath to mount it to whatever it's mounting to, whatever your, uh, um, countertop is. So, um, if, if you can go with the 33 inch, go with the 33 inch, but if you can't, 30 is fine, as long as you have in, in enough space for it. Obviously the bigger sink base, the bigger sink you can get. Um, but a 30 is fine if, if it's a smaller sink. I hope you're having fun. We're gonna cut this off in a few minutes. I'm gonna do a pretend ending here in a second, then we'll talk for another minute. Can also maximize space in a smaller kitchen with 33 inch wide standard depth refrigerator instead of a 36. Yeah, um, that's another thing, In a, another good point. When you're thinking about, if, especially if you're redesigning a kitchen, think about those appliances. And do you need a 36 inch fridge? Can you go with something smaller? Can you go with a 30? Can you go with a 24 inch range? Can you go with an 18 inch dishwasher? Um, I can't, but you might be able to if it's a small enough kitchen. We've, I've done many kitchens in the past where we had to pare down. In fact, I did a kitchen for an apartment that I had and I had to have smaller everything. So that's what we did. And we, we made the room with the appliances. And so that's, that's a way to do it. Uh, with regards to appliances, are Thermador fridges any good? Uh, they're very high end and I hear they're uh, really great but I never had one. I don't really know. Best thing to do with any of this stuff is read the two and three star reviews that are over a year old or two years old. Um, that's going to give you the best insight on basically anything that you read, you read reviews on. So, but I, I hear Thermador is really good. I'm not an appliance expert by any means. Your last video with the quartz it reminds me of the trailer park. Well, it wasn't my inspiration. Um, actually, these are Steve Urkel glasses that uh, my uh, my son has, and uh, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> but but yeah, it's true. Um, here's my earpiece. Uh, I, I I don't know what I was thinking on that video. I must have had too much medication or something from COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun, but it didn't do that well. So it's all good, but I, I had fun doing it. And uh, it's my, it's my natural accent, by the way, that I actually work hard at talking like this and not like that. So yeah, you know, it's all good. We recently bought a tall, thin fridge with a bottom freezer and a small oven of them both. Not fancy, but good in the space. That's it. Don't need to be fancy. It does need to be operational and give you the space. All right. Thumbs up are always appreciated as always. Question of the week. Let's go back to it one more time uh, before we go. We'll get a few more of these in. How do you maximize kitchen space to make it more functional? That's the question. If you're watching this in replay, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think is the best way to maximize the storage space in your kitchen? What did you do? What advice do you have for those of us out here who are trying to get every little bit of space utilized in our kitchen that we have available to us? That's really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, I certainly did go full, full Canadian. I went, I went a little bit Eastern Canadian. In fact, that's 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 where that came from. And if you know, you know. And if not, some people are like, "What accent is that?" And uh, I was like, "Well, I guess if you, if you ever visit the Maritimes, you'll hear some of that uh, twang." You know, it's just certain parts of the world that have a, a particular, you know, droll, and that's kind of the droll. The, the vernacular of the the area all right i'm glad you liked the video that's important all these videos hopefully you know well these long form videos are a little bit different uh because it's us chatting and definitely sometimes not much rhyme nor reason but we're going to end this this way i'm going to do this this ending for you stay on if you're in the live chat uh stay on if you're on live if you're watching this in replay uh i hope that you can join us sometimes for a live 
because this, you know, is just a great opportunity for us to chat and talk a little bit, answer questions, ask questions, stump me with questions, you know, all that kind of stuff. And what's really cool is that a lot of times I don't have all the answers, but we, we have a lot of answers in the chat feed and uh, it's a great way to, to hear ideas. A lot of you guys in the chat, you know, comment back and forth to each other, which is awesome. So if you if you're watching this and replay, try to make a live stream. I'd love to have you come on and uh, be part of it. And uh, that, that'd be really cool. But if you can't, thank you so much for watching. And what do I want to say? Check out what I love and hate about my kitchen. It's going to be over here and uh, you're going to love it. I promise.